Hello everyone, my name is Nathan Zimmerman and welcome to my new lab space. Finally graduated from NDSU in electrical engineering and over here I got my design bench and over here I have my workbench. Now tonight what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, one of my latest and greatest creations which is this reflow oven kit that I designed. Now the reflow oven kit, uh, I have two versions. I have a deluxe model which includes a 2.2 inch touch display such as this. It has an analog cold compensation circuit. It has uh, an input for driving a solid state relay for a reflow oven, um, thermocouple input as well as a power input. Then I have a cheaper version over here which has a Nokia cell phone display instead. And then um, another neat thing about this kit, um, it's completely pretty much through hole, so very easy to solder. And then it also is actually a booster pack for the MSP430 launch pad. So you can just plug it in such as this. It's kind of hard to align it while watching video, but like so works as a, a, uh, a booster pack and so I don't know that's pretty neat anyhow I have my reflow oven controller hooked up to a infrared toaster oven right here and the kit will also include a solid state relay um, for controlling your uh, your oven uh, convection or infrared and let's see, the kit will also include a uh, low mass K-type uh, thermocouple as well as, of course, all the components that you see on the uh, PCB. So to operate it, it's quite simple. Um, right now, this guy is in its sleep state, so just touch the LCD display to wake it up. Then I have two options currently programmed into it. I have a uh, leaded and PB free. I apologize, the screen looks a little bit dirty. Um, so just hit leaded uh, profile, for example. Um, just hit the start button and you are good to go. I actually see the lights blinking in my house. Um, <laughs> this oven draws quite a bit of juice. So again, I'm using an infrared oven nowadays. Uh, the cool thing about infrared ovens is that you can apply heat to your system, in which case our PCB, we can apply heat to our PCB uh, incredibly quickly. In addition, we can also remove the absence or the additional, we can remove additional heat incredibly quickly. So that's an advantage of uh, infrared uh, heating. So basically you have three types of heating. Um, in classical physics, you can touch something to transfer heat uh, via conduction. You can put a heating element near something and transfer heat via convection, which is of course uh, through the air. Basically my hand would transfer heat to the uh, energy to the air and then the air would transfer that energy to uh, the PCB. So that's convection and the problem with that is it's really hard to um, remove energy quickly in a convection oven. Once you turn off the element, it still radiates heat for a while that uh, is consumed by your PCB and basically you easily get um, overshoot in your control system. So using an infrared oven is, uh, is very ideal. They're a bit more expensive. This is a George Foreman uh, $55 uh, toaster oven from from Walmart um, you can get them for about that price if not a little more expensive now uh, the basic concept and the basic argument here behind the reflow oven is that um, basically they're designed to take you from through hole um, soldered hand soldered component assemblies such as this to nice compact um, surface mount assemblies such as this. And uh, using a reflow oven basically simplifies the process. You can do small pitch parts such as QFNs and you can also achieve rather high uh, component densities. My camera will decide to focus. Yes, like that. So now 
Many people choose to hand solder um, surface mount components, and while that works, uh, you have the issue with very small components such as this, uh, like for example capacitor, when you touch your iron to the, the physical terminal of the device, you're actually burning it internally, and you can actually see that if you cross-section a capacitor, for example, under a powerful microscope. And basically what you're doing by damaging that component is you're changing the capacitance value of the capacitor, you're changing, for example, the voltage rating, and you're also, uh, most importantly, reducing the lifetime of the part. So when you use a reflow oven such as this, you're actually um, soldering the surface mount components as they were designed to be soldered. Now, right now, I believe I'm in my soak zone. So, yep. Um, right now I'm basically heating up the uh, surface mount parts to a point where I'm not going to damage them, but I can heat them up to a, a uniform hot temperature such, the, such that they'll reflow easier. So if I go to my little reflow profile sheet over here, we have our four traditional zones. We have a preheat zone, we have our soaking zone, we have our reflow zone, and in this zone we don't want to stay there very long um, because Basically, uh, for leaded, lead free solder, you usually um, have a peak temperature of around 230 to 250 degrees Celsius. And if the components are at that temperature for a long duration of time, uh, you risk damaging them, which is basically why I'd uh, highly recommend having a reflow oven controller such as this, as opposed to trying to manually um, operate a, a, a skillet or a convection oven. Then we have our fourth zone, which of course is our cool down. Now I mentioned I did um, manual or an analog cold compensation circuit. So I got a, a digital thermometer right here, which is reading 204 degrees Celsius. And then if I try to zoom in on our PCB, it is reading 205 degrees Celsius. So it's fairly accurate. I got both my thermal couples in there on the uh, PCB. And then it looks like um, this particular profile I just finished. Uh, this is a leaded uh, profile, so it only went up to about 200 degrees Celsius. And there's the profile right there on the screen. And then one thing, regrettably, that you should do with this uh, manual system is you have to creak open the door such that your system cools down in a timely manner. So I'm just going to take a little screwdriver, open up the door a bit, and uh, wedge the door open like so. Actually, I grabbed a pair of tweezers. So that's about the only manual step in the process. And so in order to convert your regular toaster oven into a reflow oven, I'll have some instructions with my kit. I'll show you how to take your solid state relay and to mount it in series with the elements of your oven. And I'll also give you, of course, some instructions on how to build the control board. And then the software will, of course, be open source. So there's the profile itself, um, looks fairly close to the recommended profile. Um, actually in industry where you have your 10 and 12 stage ovens, they don't actually implement this, uh, this perfect profile. Basically they ensure that they implement the import, important points such as you want your peak to be below um, 250 degrees Celsius, you want your time above liquidus which is 217 degrees Celsius to be under 50 seconds or 90 seconds, things like that. Uh, because basically what you can run into is um, in the, the PB free profiles, uh, if you're not careful you can actually damage the parts. So. That's yet another reason why I'm a huge fan of reflow ovens is when I'm building complex systems such as this, I aim for reliability and ease of assembly, and that's something that my, uh, my reflow oven um, easily allows me to achieve. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Um, if you are interested more about um, the whole reflowing hobbyist process, feel free to email me. If you're interested in a board, I am still working on these guys and uh, hopefully we'll have them out soon, but feel free to let me know if you're interested in one and I can hold one for you in my ordering sheet. But uh, yeah, anyhow, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys later.